What is up guys and welcome to my very first episode of F1 2017 career mode. This is the full version of the game. This is the McLaren career mode and I can't wait to get stuck in with this video. As well with the first video, I'm doing another giveaway for F1 2017. This time it'll be done on Twitter, so go follow me over on there. And over the course of the next week, I'm going to be tweeting out a code, whether it be for Xbox or PC or PS4. Maybe I might even do more. Um, I might do multiple. So, um, yeah, I'll randomly tweet out a code, and uh, that's the way um, you can win a code on the platform of your choice. Uh, there's also the other giveaway which is still going and I will uh, reach out to the winner uh, in about a week's time as well. So there's still an opportunity for you guys to win a code of F1 2017. So here we go, ready for the start of our career mode. We're just going through the helmet selection um, at this moment. Unfortunately my career mode helmet from F1 2016 isn't available anymore so um, I've just gone with the helmet. It kind of looks the most like it and I've kind of gone with a gold, white and uh, uh, black kind of look. I might change it up over the course of this career mode. We'll have to wait and see, but that's what the helmet looks like at the moment. So diving into career mode now, this is the team selection page, and this is where you can see the performance of all the different cars. You can see all the team expectations. Uh, being with McLaren Honda, our goal is to score points and kind of build our way back up to the top and return McLaren to former glory that they showed in the early I don't know, 2010 period where they were among one of the fastest cars along with Red Bull. So McLaren Honda, it's going to be an awfully tough challenge with the power unit that we have uh, at the moment. Um, points are not going to be a regular occurrence. Uh, we're going to have to do a lot of upgrading and uh, see how we go at the end of the season. My goal for this season is to finish in 10th place um, in the top 10 in the, in the driver's standings. So we'll have to wait and see. Ultimate AI difficulty, 50% races. Fernando Alonso as our teammate and no assists. This should be fun. Yes, and I respect that. But my client has a championship to contest. So if you want our participation, I'm afraid the concessions are mandatory. Yes, that's fine. Get back to me when you can. Goodbye. No one ever just signs the contract. Anyway, thanks for coming by on such short notice. I just needed to cover a couple of quick things with you before you race. Firstly, as requested, there's a copy of your contract. It's a rolling deal. However, the team reserves right of termination if you fail to meet performance standards. Your second driver for now, but work hard, hit your targets and I'll be able to sweeten the deal. I'm also looking to get you into some invitational events throughout the season. The experience and exposure from these will be great for your image. Plus, you'll get to drive some nice historic cars. Now then, go get ready for the next session. And good luck. Thank you very much, Emma. In case you missed the uh, first preview episode of Career Mode, she's basically our, our agent, our PR lady, and she's going to be handling um, our contract stuff and just professional stuff behind the scenes in Formula One. We've been given a new tr uh, contract. We will be the second driver at McLaren Honda. If we perform well, we'll become the uh, first team driver with a lot of uh, good performances. But uh, that won't be coming until at least like the second half of the season. As always with this career mode, um, you have uh, the laptop where you can navigate all the different menus. You can go through, um, you know, what the information is like, uh, you know, weather, tire updates for the upcoming weekend. Then you have your vehicle management so you can manage your power unit and also your gearbox. Uh, bear in mind if you use too many parts too quickly or if you run out of different components then you're going to start getting grid penalties and in this McLaren Honda in real life it's pretty unreliable and we're going to find out just how how far the realism goes into the game definitely going to be a tough season that is for sure but it's time for the first race now we're going to go off for practice now at the Australian Grand Prix Welcome to Melbourne where the practice session is about to start for this weekend's Australian Grand Prix the pre-race talking is over. Now it's time for the drivers to show their worth. Welcome then to all our viewers and of course to Anthony Davidson as well. Now Ant, I wanted to ask you, obviously there's a lot of hard work involved in these sessions, a lot of simulations as well. Is this something the drivers enjoy or is it just a routine that becomes a chore? There's nothing routine about driving a Formula 1 car, I can tell you that. 
300 kilometers per hour down the straights, 4G through the corners. It's hard to ignore those forces acting on your body. It's lap after lap of hard, exhausting work. You always enjoy driving these cars. It's a real privilege. Although I must say, if you're having a day where you can't get the car to do what you want and it's generally underperforming, then it's a lot harder to stay motivated. But never a chore, no. Even if you're having a tough start to the weekend, at this point you know that if you work hard at it, there's still an opportunity to turn things around. Okay then, so here we are for practice for the Australian Grand Prix, my home race being an Australian, so I do want to get off here on the right foot. Hopefully in this weekend we can just jag like a single point. Um, I'm, I'm not expecting big things, especially in the first few races. This car needs a lot of development work. We need to work on the engine straight away, uh, but we can't do that until after practice too. That's when we get the introduction to resource points and all that good thing. So, resource points, how do you earn those? Basically, you go through the practice programs, um, like the track acclimatization test that we're doing now. You also do other modes like the tire wear test, uh, qualifying pace, fuel uh, consumption, and race pace as well. So there's a lot of programs to run through and practice this year. And if you're in an uncompetitive car, then it's going to eat up a lot of your uh, time. It's going to be quite time consuming in all honesty, um, if you really want to work on the resource points and upgrade your car. Um, so if you're not you know, quite ready for that kind of commitment, then I'd probably recommend going with at least a upper tier car, like in the top end of the midfield, or even one of the front running cars, like the Ferrari, uh, you know, Williams, Force India, uh, Red Bull, and even Mercedes, in all honesty, if you don't want to spend too much time in practice. But we're on to the uh, tyre wear test, and we managed to pass that quite well. Um, had a few scary moments where we lost the back end, but on 2017, it is, um, it's not too hard to avoid losing the back end. The traction this year is really quite, uh, quite well. So if you're used to running with traction control on the previous F1 games, I'd recommend just turning it off. I think you might be fine. It, it really is, uh, that much easier to manage the back end on, uh, this year's game. But now we're on to the, um, uh, the fuel consumption, uh, kind of test and, uh, basically, this one was pretty hard. You had to make sure that you didn't burn too much fuel. You had to lift and coast into some heavy braking zones, especially if you want to recover a lot of fuel. And uh, we just managed to uh, beat the uh, target time set by the team. And now we're off for the qualifying pace test. And this is basically where you go flat out on the fastest tire and um, you go out on low fuel and you just try and set the best uh, lap time possible. So this is gonna be a really good indication as to how quick we are this weekend. We're currently sitting in last place. Um, don't worry though, we haven't really set a competitive lap time as of yet, but this time um, we'll be hoping to jolt ourselves up towards the top half of the grid. It looks like we're six tenths up on our previous best. Oh no, we're actually six tenths up on the target, so that's actually pretty good. And I think the target time is like 17th place on the grid. Um, it gives you like a prediction of what a 17th place time will be in qualifying. So uh, we're currently six tenths up on that, or nine tenths up, over a second now. So we're doing really good on this lap. Understeer through the final corner as we short shift all the way up to the line. And it is a, oh, what is it going to be? Nine tenths up. It's a 127.726. Uh, we beat the target, but we didn't get a perfect score. But uh, in the end, I think that was a pretty uh, solid lap time. As we scroll down the order, we end up in 16th place in terms of practice. So, yeah, as you can see there, even with a really good lap in practice, we're still not that competitive. Ah, you got my message. Perfect. Welcome to home away from home. We get more real-time data from the factory now than ever before, and it all comes through. So I have to spend more time checking over the reports and less time hunting you down in the hospitality suite. And to that end... Sorry, just a sec. Yeah, Chris here, is this important? I'm in the middle of something. Ah, okay. Right. Um, well, that makes no sense. Have Sarah reset the simulation and run it again. Okay. Sorry about that. As I was saying, we've set up a desk for you at the front here. 
You get onto the network from your laptop, so make sure to check the R&D screen regularly. And let us know how you want to use the data that we've collected over the weekend and through the practice programs. Also, bear in mind that the news from the factory won't always be good. Sometimes tests fail, like you've seen just now. And when that happens, we have to divert additional resources to fix it. Say la vie, I'm afraid. So that is the R&D guy for our uh, career mode. I don't even know what his name is, and he was a, a character in F1 2016. That's, that's pretty bad. But resource points, it's a very important facet of this game, and it's going to be crucial to your success in career mode. We get an original allocation of 3,000 resource points to spend on the car, and as you can imagine, we're going to go straight for the powertrain and um, upgrade um, the first thing that we can do in there. Now, originally, when I was going through and upgrading some of the components in the powertrain, uh, at the moment I'm just doing some uh, improvements to the, I don't know, quality control, uh, which basically means that um, less things are going to fail when I upgrade them, and I especially don't want them to fail on the uh, powertrain. Now, as you can see here, when we go towards the upgrade, you can see the performance um, comparison, and uh, I got really scared here because I thought that was the overall performance comparison of McLaren versus the rest of the field, but uh, I then soon realized that that was only the powertrain um, rankings, and you can see McLaren is a long way behind everyone else, and then I went across the chassis and everything else, and I noticed that McLaren actually isn't too bad in terms of, you know, its chassis and aerodynamic performance comparison versus the rest of the field. They're actually quite a, uh, I'd say in the middle, midfield team. Um, the chassis itself is actually really good, only just behind Mercedes there. So, yeah, not too bad in terms of uh, the other facets of performance. The only thing we're really lacking, as you can see there, is the powertrain, which will be um, allocating a lot of resource points too. So, uh, what I've done so far, an upgrade to the powertrain. Um, we did a few reliability things for the uh, powertrain as well, and we're also going to upgrade the durability and um, that's going to take a couple of races to filter through. So uh, that's everything in terms of the resource points for now. Um, we spent quite a few there. And you'd be surprised at how quickly you can spend uh, resource points. I just feel like, oh, why couldn't we do more? But uh, 3,000 3, resource points is a lot to spend. And that's definitely going to help us in a race or two's time. So that's all the R&D components out of the way. There's a lot to take on board there. But I'll explain that. Um, over the course of the career, we'll have plenty of time to go through that. But for now, that's it. It's time for qualifying for our very first race. Welcome to Melbourne, where qualifying for the Australian Grand Prix should be getting underway shortly. And I'm here, of course, with Anthony Davidson on what has turned out to be a very pleasant day indeed. No weather to interfere, no problems on the track, so absolutely no room for error. That's right, Crofty. It's looking good out there at the moment. Each team will have their own game plan for this session. And of course, once the cars leave the garage, they'll be under Park Fermi conditions. So any last minute adjustments need to be done right here and now. Beyond that, it's all up to the driver. Who can keep their tyres in the right temperature? Who can hit their apexes? No race fuel on board these days, of course. These are the fastest cars we've had in a long, long time. And it's right here in qualifying where they're at their absolute peak. Let's get started. Here we go. First qualifying session of our F1 2017 career mode. I believe the uh, benchmark that the team set was 17th place, and uh, hopefully we should be able to do that. Lewis Hamilton is the first cab off the rank to uh, head out on the track. This short qualifying session is a lot shorter than what it was on 2016. Only 12 minutes are allocated, and uh, we're, under, we're under the pump, we're under pressure to get some runs in. I don't think we'll get three runs in. I think it's only going to be a two-time session, so... Yeah, that's um, quite interesting. In, in my personal opinion, I think the short qualifying should be uh, longer. Um, I feel like 12 minutes is just not enough time to get, um, you know, a representative qualifying time in. It's only a couple of runs. But uh, speaking of our first run, um, the first lap we did was pretty terrible. And uh, I just backed off and let Alonso go through. Was hoping to steal a bit of slipstream off of him. But unfortunately, he pulled into the pit lane and that was that. So... Carrying on for our second lap on the same set of ultra soft tyres, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Seven tenths up as we head through the first sector. That moves to eight tenths as uh, we continue to move forward. Um, that gap is only going to extend though, as we're running in like a super high rich uh, rev mode, and uh, 
Yeah, we should gain even more time. 1.7 seconds off. It's because I like, completely backed off on my first lap. But uh, we'll see what this lap gives us as we head up to the line. Rich Rev, 6.1 seconds up, and we only move up by one position ahead of Marcus Ericsson. Hashtag McLaren problems. But uh, yeah, Daniel Ricciardo tops the list at the moment with a 23-1. We're sitting on a 26-1. Three seconds off the pace, but fortunately enough, we're only uh, a tenth, away, tenth and a half away from our teammate, Fernando Alonso. We'll chuck on a new set of tyres. The Delta is three and a half tenths of uh, an improvement. We'll definitely find more time than that in ourselves anyway. As we start our final run, we've got Nico Hulkenberg really ranging up on us into turn one. He's actually gone for, for the move there while we're actually on our flying lap. That's, that's unbelievable. This McLaren Honda is so slow. And uh, it's, it's actually really putting us under pressure now. As he goes for another move around the outside, through the fast left for Archie Kane. His lap is already ruined, but he took it upon himself to try and ruin my lap as well. That was really costly. We're still up by two tenths, so hopefully we can improve. He's currently sitting in P17 at the moment, so we are meeting the objectives set by the team at the moment. Through the final corner, fifth gear, open the DRS, run up to the line. We're going to improve by just under four tenths, 17th place. Well, the team's happy with that qualifying session. I am uh, slightly on the fence about that one. Uh, 17th place, yes, we met the team objectives, but we still could have improved by quite a bit more than what we did there. Hulkenberg really screwed us up there, and if it weren't for the short qualifying format, we would have got an extra lap in, and I think um, we would have improved even further on the time that we set at the end of that session anyway. So... Uh, I think we were a long way from Fernando Alonso's time as well, so we do have a lot of uh, ground to make up over the course of this career mode series. Uh, I guess the only way from here is up, especially with the car upgrades on the way, and um, if I continue to work on the setup and dial myself in with the handling model, then uh, yeah, anything's possible. Uh, we've moved up in terms of the team approval uh, within the other teams, like Salva, Haas, and Toro Rosso, so that's uh, pretty solid, but uh, yeah, that's it for qualifying. Time for the race. Today's race, of course, not simply the start of a new season, but the start of a new kind of Formula One. Anthony Davidson, great to have you with us once again. This is a big moment for the sport, big changes to the technical regulations, the potential, perhaps, to give us the biggest shake-up since 2014. Very different cars visually and, fingers crossed, much faster as well. Good thing then that combined these teams put in just a shade over 13,000 kilometers on the clock during testing. The cornering speed of these new machines is absolutely unbelievable. How many lap records are still held by Michael Schumacher from 2004? Well on the right day, on the right tyres, we might just be threatening them this year. Wider tyres, wider cars, more downforce. I have to say they look great and the qualifying spectacle is undebatable. Now the big question remains, can they follow? Can they race? or have these new rules gone too far? Okay, I know it's your home Grand Prix, but treat it like any other race. Don't take unnecessary risks. I don't know about you, but I, I feel like I kind of do need to take risks, especially in these opening few races, given that the car performance is uh, very poor for us at the moment. But welcome to the Australian Grand Prix. We're sitting on the grid in 17th place, right alongside our teammates. So um, hopefully we can just follow Alonso through. We know his reputation when it comes to uh, the opening lap and how many positions he can gain in those opening few corners so um, if that kind of character trait follows its way onto the game then uh, we'll just follow Alonso through into the points that's going to be the goal for today hopefully uh, that can pay off for us we're doing the one stop uh, I think we're starting on the supers and then finishing on the softs I believe in real life no one really touched the softs but it uh, looks like we're going to be doing that today if we want to perfect the one-stop strategy. But here we go, ready for the start of this McLaren F1 2017 career mode, and we are underway in Melbourne. Fairly average start, it must be said. Alonso draws alongside the next group of cars. Actually, no, he's not really. He's uh, all by himself. We draw alongside, round the outside, through time one, and it's side-by-side -side for the two teammates. Apparently, I made a collision with Pascal Wehrlein, which I have absolutely no idea how that happened. Uh, we draw to the inside to maybe gain a few places on the way into turn three. We've got really got to be opportunistic on this first lap. We know this McLaren is not going to be the paciest of cars, especially once that DRS gets enabled, but we couldn't find a way around Carlos Sainz around the outside of turn four, so it's 14th place for the moment. Three spots gained, not too bad. I'll definitely take it. Hopefully, 
Um, we can play ourselves in with the strategy quite nicely, especially if the guys in front are doing two stops. We are definitely going to make it 100% on a one stop, it's especially uh, because that's what you do in real life. But either way, we got the inside of Carlos Sainz into the penultimate corner. Nothing really doing there, he only left me the space and look at that. The, the exit that he got off, got off of the final corner was ridiculous and now Hulkenberg is going to shape up a move up the inside into turn one. It's qualifying all over again, we defend. And uh, looks like we just hold on to the position, uh, being, you know, taking the racing line through turn one is pretty much the fastest way around that corner. And uh, yeah, Hulkenberg wasn't up alongside enough to make the move stick. But lap two, we've got some yellow flags. I think it's just local yellows as one of the cars is out of the Grand Prix. It's Daniel Kafiat. You can see him on the minimap just pulling off to the side. And that might trigger a safety car. We'll have to wait and see though. Haven't seen a full course caution on F1 2017 yet. I don't believe. So hopefully we can see one today. That'll really uh, help out my race. I think, I think if a, a safety car came out now, I think I'd probably pit and put on the softs and just go to the end and uh, see where that strategy would take me. But uh, lap six, we've settled into the race. Um, we've lost a bit of ground to the cars ahead. Carl Sainz has pulled away by a few seconds. Hulkenberg is still in the watching brief right behind me. Um, hasn't really made a move yet, but it looks like he might be doing that right on cue now. Around the outside, into the fast left-right chicane, and that is uh, 13th place for Hulkenberg. I've just got a message from the engineer as well that rain is about 15 minutes away. That's the ETA. So, uh, yeah, that could be interesting. I never saw any forecast for rain in this Grand Prix, so um, if we take these supers long enough, we could make it to that rain spell as uh, we see Sebastian Vettel coming out of the pits on lap 8. That's a very early pit stop for the supers, like, doing a few laps on them in quali. They only did, like... 10% uh, in terms of wear, so tyres are much more durable on this game. I think the majority of tracks this year are gonna, all going to be one stops, and uh, yeah, just doing mileage and qualifying really doesn't have that much of an effect on uh, your starting set for the race. But Alonso is in the pits, he just did the undercut on the previous lap. Um, he did start on the ultras, of course, and I think we're stopping around lap 13 ish, so uh, it looks like Alonso might potentially uh, jump us. But, uh, yeah, we're waiting for the rain, that's in all honesty, so we'll have to wait and see how that goes. That's Lance Stroll, no, it's Felipe Massa up the inside. I'm doing a crofty of this race, I'm getting too many things wrong. He goes up the inside, and I think this is going to be a bit of a trait over the next 5-10 laps, because a lot of cars, especially inside the top 10, have just made stops, and now they're just mugging me off left, right, and center um, on their fresher tires with their faster engines. Yes, that's going to be a, a reference I'm going to be making full use of, especially in the far first half of this season. Look at that. Just, how can you compete? How can you... Why did I go McLaren? Why did I pick McLaren Honda as my career mode team? I don't know. I like I like to torture myself. But, uh, yeah. We carry on. This is a replay of uh, Grosjean, I think, going up my inside. I was trying to defend, and then uh, he took a bit of a compromised line through turn one. He didn't take the racing line, and we just got him back there. So, um, I'm going to fight where I can, but uh, you know, at times you just got to know when to give up and when not to, to fight. We're not really in the race with these guys because they've already made a stop and got much fresher tyres. So I'm just doing what I can for the moment, just hoping out that the rain uh, isn't too far away. Um, but uh, it looks like it really isn't that close. Speaking of close, that was uh, a bit close for, for comfort through turn one there. But we managed to get the spot back on Grosjean. Now inside the top ten as everyone just continues to pit. And it uh, looks like Grosjean has got me around the outside. I try, try and go for the counter-attacking move. He's got a really slow run through the second part of that chicane. And now we're just getting mugged off left, right, and center. Force Indias, Renaults, everyone. Go on, just overtake me. I'm just getting pinballed left, right, and center. And what was a spot inside the top 10 in the McLaren Honda, I've now dropped to 13th place. All because of Grosjean, uh, who just checked up so much in that chicane. And, uh, yeah, look at that. Just getting pinballed between the AI and... That was uh, GG for me. It's, it's amazing, like, what a lack of straight line speed can do in these races. Like, that's what you need, really, just to perfect overtakes. If you don't have that, then it's hard to move forward. Um, and this season, for sure, is definitely going to be a massive struggle as Stroll goes around our outside and uh, demotes us to 13th place. So, a lot of these people who stopped earlier are now pretty much catching up to me as I'm really struggling on my tyres now. Almost oversteered right into the barrier of the start finish straight. Look at that again. Really, really close. I think there was only a tie within that uh, between us and ending our race in just complete disaster. 
Um, just got caught up on the curb on the exit, but uh, didn't shy away from opening the DRS pretty much while I was still sideways. But we carry on. Lap 16, Carlos Sainz flies right past us. And uh, what I thought originally was going to be a really good strategy, it looks like it's uh, fading away. This rain is taking an awfully long time to get here, and uh, we're just losing like time hand over fist at this point. Like We're already slow enough on, you know fairly new tyres, chuck old tyres on the car and we're just like slower than anything right now. Here comes uh, one of the Williams again, that's Felipe Massa around the outside. Oh, again, the car is sliding uh, through that left right chicane. It's getting pretty, uh, you know, sketchy out there. The rain, I think it's just starting to fall now. There's, uh, you know, the odd drop here or there, but the tyre wear as well is really uh, exacerbating the fact that the, the track is just so slippery at this point. I'm just doing my absolute best to hold on. Here comes Fernando Alonso, of all people, who has already made a stop and is now overtaking me around the outside through turn one. I'm going to try and hold on to the position if I can. It's a very tight turn one, and I think he just manages to get me there. He throws up the hand in frustration as, uh, well, he's been held up by the number two driver who's on some stupid strategy um, just getting in his way. Um, I think he would have put a team radio out to... The world feed saying, you know, all the time you have to leave a space or something like that. But yeah, he's got me now. And uh, at this point, the only people behind me are like the Salvers and people who are having a much more dreadful race than I am. Uh, lap 20, still haven't made a stop in this race uh, as of yet. And finally, the rain is uh, upon us. But uh, I feel like it's, it's too late. We've already lost that chance of uh, finishing inside the top 10. And... Um, yeah, we're, we're just about last again, so, yeah, really, really stuffed up the strategy, I can only apologise. Okay, be careful on those slicks, these conditions are making the line a bit greasy, but we're still nowhere near the changeover point. We're considering switching to an alternate strategy, do you want to change or stick to plan A? Okay, so, now we're getting the alternate strategy change, and... Uh, this is always the triggering point to go onto a different compound attire. Teammate is in the pits, Alonso, so I'm guessing he's switching to the Inters as well. So uh, let's get it out of the way and get on the intermediate tires now. We've got to take a risk. We're so far down the order that uh, it's it's just worth a gamble at this point. And we might have just got held up by Alonso. No, I think we're fine. And onto the Inters we go. The sun is still out. And if I look on the map... I think Alonso was on dry tyres. Why... Why was I called into the pits when... The track is still dry? Jeff? Why Why have you done this? Look, oh my god. Yeah, we got... It's, we got caught out again. By, by the changeable condition. Sometimes this happened on the old game. Where the engineer would just make an absolute mare of things. And call you into the pits when it was way way too early to change onto a wet compound and it looks like this is just what's happened to us today it's it's almost looked like it you know it was raining it was you know spitting with rain quite a bit and then now the the droplets of rain have pretty much gone away and it's dry again i uh, i don't believe it i honestly don't believe this i mean i already screwed up the race myself anyway and we weren't going to score points but uh we had to take the risk and uh, now it, we're just getting, you know, humbled by, by everyone. I think we're a lap down now, maybe two laps down. I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to check up on that. But um, we just got to check up from the engineer just to see where the rain was. Um, it looks like it's kind of made a return now. But he even said now that the rain is still going to stick around for another 20 minutes. But I don't even see any rain. So we're going to come back into the pits and fit on the dry tires again. Back to the ultras. Um, and see if we can set a fastest lap of the Grand Prix or something. Try and regain some points in the, the driver rivalry, because at this point I don't have anything left to fight for. But uh, that was the Grand Prix with that additional stop that I just made then. Uh, we just went two laps down, and that was the race. Really unfortunate. I can only apologise, but hey, in a McLaren Honda, I don't think we were going to score points anyway. Sorry about that. I guess they can't all go to plan. Bring her in. We'll go over what happened in the debrief. And as we can see, it's time for the podium. And as the drivers make their way out, there's a familiar red suit making its way to the top step. Fantastic win for Ferrari.
So Kimi Raikkonen gets the victory, the first one of this F1 2017 career mode. Quite interesting, because Kimi never really wins in real life. Ferrari always prefer Sebastian Vettel, but now that there isn't that, uh, I don't know, bias, we can see Kimi really coming to the forefront in the game. I think in the uh, performance chart, Ferrari was actually the quickest car, which I found quite surprising. I'm guessing that the, the car, you know, balancing and stuff hasn't taken effect. This is... Uh, recorded before the first day patch hasn't even come out like the game You know still only comes out in like four or five days So I'm hoping that there might be some kind of performance boost for the McLaren that would definitely help out and uh, bring us closer to uh, The midfield, but yeah, we have a lot of work to do a lot of upgrades to affect We're now on 663 resource points and we might be able to do something in the next episode So we'll have to wait and see uh, how that goes, but rivalry updates. That's not looking good either uh, Alonso leads us six points to three and we have just a lot of work to do if we want to recover that in future episodes But uh, in terms of the reputation uh, that's taken a bit of a hit We didn't meet our team's targets finished pretty much last out of everyone who finished But I think that might possibly be the worst result of the career mode I I'm pretty confident that we will only have better results from here But now it's time to meet Jonathan who's going to show us his classic cars Is this the one? Indeed it is and this is Jonathan. He's going to let you drive some of his cars. Well, not quite my cars, per se. It's a, a mere detail. You know, I'd really rather be down there racing than myself, to be honest. I'm actually quite handy behind the wheel, but uh, it's the downforce, those lateral Gs, you know? The old neck can't really handle it. So I need a pro. And that's where you come in. We run in a bunch of events throughout the year. Time trials, races, all sorts. And I have it on good authority that you have the ability and temperament to do well at these. Make our business look good and, most importantly, bring the cars back in one piece. <laughs> so consider this a formal invitation. I'll see you at the track. I'll see you in one of your classic cars, which we're going to go off and do now. So, uh, because of that abysmal uh, Grand Prix that I just showcase for you guys. I want to kind of redeem myself. So we're going to include this invitational event in this episode to round things off. We're going to go off to Japan in the uh, short uh, layout and do a pursuit race in Fernando Alonso's 2006 Renault. Uh, perhaps we got this uh, drive in the 2006 Renault because of the connections we have with Alonso. That's the kind of, uh, you know, storyline I want to throw in there. But here we go, ready for this race five red lights and we'll get this race underway these guys get a really big head start so we've got a lot of uh, ground to make up and hopefully uh, we can pass the challenge and win the race it might only be the only race win we get this season so um, if you know if we want to be competitive we're gonna have to save it for the invitational events but we carry on to lap two um, we basically spent that whole time just grinding away trying to cut down the gaps of the cars ahead uh, by the time we get to the third lap I think we'll pretty much converge on every single car and uh, it'll be uh, really tight for uh, the race victory. We get around the outside of uh, Mikai? M Mikai? I'm not... They're, they're just random names. They don't have the actual driver's names in these F1 cars. That's how they get around the licensing. Speaking of getting around, that's a McLaren that uh, we've absolutely smashed through the first sector. This Ferrari is parking it on the apex. We managed to get him around the outside too and that's P2 for the taking. Next up is the McLaren MP4-6, I believe it is. We're getting around the outside through the penultimate corner. And there we go, P1. As easy as that. That's our first race victory of our career mode. And it might be the only one we get all season. So, hey, I'll definitely take that. Uh, goal passed. And I think uh, with that, we get might get some uh, resource points. And uh, just, uh, you know, points added to our career mode score. So... It's always handy in uh, showing the bigger teams what we're definitely capable of. Okay, I've got something for you. The new parts have been fitted to the car. The simulation numbers are good, so look forward to your feedback. Check out the details. Awesome, so it looks like we've already got our first upgrade ready for the Chinese Grand Prix. Let's have a look. It is a durability upgrade, so uh, not the performance upgrade in terms of the power unit that we were looking for. Um, that might be another race weekend away. So, um, yeah, there it is. Durability, uh, just general wear 
on the, I think it was ICE or something. I didn't really read it in time, but um, yeah, that now opens up the umbrella and we can, uh, you know, upgrade a whole bunch of different things in terms of the durability. But in all honesty, in terms of my strategy for the R&D this season, I want to be really aggressive. I almost don't want to focus on reliability. I just want to get the raw pace of the car up as quickly as we possibly can. I don't mind if we have failures here and there. We're not going for the championship. Um, ultimately, we just want to get those, you know, flash in the pan results like in Monaco, Singapore, Hungary. Get those really big point um, finishes and get ourselves up the order in terms of the championship. Um, even if it means we sacrifice a few engines, a few grid penalties here and there. I just want to be really aggressive and get this car where it needs to be as quickly as we can so that we can really um, challenge the top teams in Season 2 of this career mode. That's the ultimate goal, to win the championship with McLaren Honda. It might take a few seasons. We might not even get there at all. You guys will just have to stick in with the journey and see how it all pans out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe to see plenty more F1 2017 videos. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed as well. And until the next one, guys, I'll see you next time.